Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Beginner's Java's beginnersjava.com's uh, continuing tutorial series on learning Java. I am Damien, your host. This is going to be lesson 16 and uh, we're going to hang up our arrays for just a moment and we're going to talk a little bit about methods. Um, methods are going to be how we handle uh, large swaths of data in uh, Java. They're going to be how we handle anything that requires us to call it repeatedly. Um, typically, if you ever had a loop and the loop was doing, say, more than, I don't know, five lines of code, and it was being done, I don't know, more than two, three times, you'll, be in the, you'll probably want to toss it in a method. It's just easier organizationally. So, okay, here's what we're going to be doing. We're going to come up above our source code. Uh, it's going to go in our class, but aside from that, just anywhere in here. And you're going to type static. And the reason why is because we're going to be calling it from main. So um, there are ways that we can use non-static things, but just for this early example, I want to use static. And we'll make it a void. And we'll call it uh, disp message. Followed by uh, two open, or well, an open and close paren and an open and close bracket. And here, we're just going to say system.out.println. And we're just going to say hello world. Um, this can be pretty useful for menus and things of that nature that you might go back to a few times. So do keep that in mind as well. Um, this display message type thing, because this can hold as many system.out.println's or prints as we want. And uh, if you want, you can stick an entire uh, case structure in here and take in a variable. But we'll get into how to do that in a minute. But then all we actually need to put inside of our code to have it run inside of uh, main is disk message and then an open and close bracket. So we give this a run. It says hello world. So what we're doing here is we're having display message, the method, get called from main and then main says hey you know where is this and you know um, since it was declared before we hit that point it's able to uh, to find out where it was and you know run the contents as though it was normal code. Now there's a lot of things that we can do with uh, methods and they're all pretty interesting. So I want to show you guys a couple of things, um, different return types and stuff like that. I do need just one moment to get a drink. We'll be right back. Okay, I'm sorry about that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, to change a few things around about our thing and I'll show you uh, our method not our thing sorry and uh, I'll show you some more useful things that we can do with that so let's assume that we have uh, I don't know let's say a we just want to take the sum of two numbers that the user input and let's say we want to loop this a few times so let's say we have a uh, simple loop, we'll say uh, for int i equals zero, i is less than two i plus plus. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to, uh, I'll define them out here, int j equals zero, k equals zero. So in here we're going to say j equals, uh, we'll do an output first I suppose. And we'll say enter number one. You know what, we'll even put in a third variable and call it sum, just so I can show you something. Okay, so enter number one, we're just going to copy that. Same number two as well. 
And so we'll then say j equals input dot next int and the same thing for k. k equals input dot next int. All right, now we're going to change a couple of different things about this. First, we're going to change it to public. We could have done that with the first one, though. Um, we didn't need to. The reason why this is public will make sense later um, when we talk more about access modifiers. But for now, don't worry about it. Um, I probably didn't even have to do that with this one. Well, I know I didn't. And we're just going to call this... Um, you know what? Let's let's copy from the C++ videos and take in prod sum. And this is going to take in int x and int y. And so we'll have it uh you know what? We'll have it return an int as well. So why is that giving me hell now? Missing return statement. Yeah, I know. I haven't gotten there yet. So, um, let's just say return z, then declare z. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what the hell I'm doing here, um, because I'm sure you're all pretty lost now. Okay, this public static, we can ignore that for now. Um, we'll just say that this is telling the uh, compiler that we're allowed to access it. The int is what's known as the return type. So that means that this method is passing something back into main. Whereas with void, it does not pass anything back into name. Prod sum is actually going to be the uh, the just the name of the method. Int x and int y are known as arguments. Um, anything that are in between these two parentheses right here, the highlighted ones, are known as arguments, and we will have to pass in values for those arguments. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say system.out.println, and we're going to do x multiplied by y, and this is going to be the product. of our numbers. And you know what, we'll even go one step further and say it. We'll say the product is we'll give that its own parentheses because it looks nicer. And then we'll well we can set z equal to uh, x plus y if we want. But alternatively, if we wanted to just do this easily, we could just do x plus y. So either one of those is fine. Since I've already declared z, I'll just use z. And so here's what we do to call this method. It's a little bit uh, different, but what we'll do is we'll say sum is equal to uh, j. Oh, I'm sorry prod sum j comma k and so then all we're going to do here is output a system dot out dot println and say oop, that's not what I wanted the sum is and then plus sum and so I'm going to give this a run, and then we'll talk about what's happening. Okay, so the first number will enter 20, and then 10. So the product is 200, the sum is 30, and now we'll do 40 and 5. The product is 200, and the sum is 45. So what this is doing each iteration through is first it's having us enter the numbers, but then it's setting the sum equal to the return value, which is this line right here, of our uh, method. 
So what it does is it sends the values j and k as arguments, which are then internally renamed as x and y. You can rename them anything up here if you want. You can name it like oh hi and var if you really want. But then you'd have to change it internally, so I'm not going to do that. Um, but yeah, you can name these variables anything up here. They can be different than you know what you pass them in as down here. If you want, they can be the same. Um, I wouldn't recommend that though, and we'll find out why later. Um, mostly ambiguity. But just to cover that again, the things that we pass in as arguments are then renamed up here and then we can use them as though they're local variables just like this is um, our main and then the return statement all that does is it passes something back to main and typically you're going to be setting something or you're going to be doing something with the value that's returned um, there are some cases where you might not be using it correctly or effectively, but generally speaking, this uh, return statement means that you want something passed back. So we'll give that another run, and um, I want to check the time before I do this. Yeah, I've got a little bit. And I'm actually going to do it uh, as a debugger, so that way we can uh, see the variables as we step through. So, okay, static and args, that's not stuff that we play around with yet. Okay, so um, input has been initialized, but we don't screw around with the contents of that because we don't need to. Okay, so now we have a couple of variables, j and k, which have both been initialized to zero. Um, we're outputting a line right there, and I'm actually going to make this a little bit bigger so we can see what's going on. And then we're taking in uh, input, so I have to click over here and say uh, 20. And then another one, we'll say uh, 5. Okay, so we're going to come back over here. And now, uh, okay, that's 20, and I just said 5, so I don't think it's updated yet. There it is. Okay, so k and j are now respectively 20 and 5. So what you're going to see when I hit this prod sum thing is it's actually going to, uh, I think I might have to do step into. So I do that and it comes up here straight into our, uh, our method. And you'll notice that all of our other stuff has disappeared. All of our other variables are not applicable up here. Um, because they're they're now out of scope. So now the only values we have are x and y and they're 20 and 5 respectively. So as we go through this, z gets declared as 0. We print out and, and the product is 100 and that's fine. And then we return z which has been set to 25. And when we do that, the sum is then being set to z, which was 25. As you can see, the sum hasn't even been declared yet because we haven't hit the, uh, the return statement. So once we step over this, sum is now equal to 25. And then that will get printed when we do our next step over. And I think that's going to be it for time. Yeah, um, unfortunately I'm not going to be able to cover too, too much more in this. Um, I will do my best to explain whatever has happened here. I did want to get into the debugger side of this, though, because I felt that that was very important to show you guys what was happening each step of the way. All right, well, this has been a beginnersjava.com production. Um, it still feels funny saying that after all the other things I've named this. But if you guys have any questions, please let me know, and I'll be more than happy to clear it up. Uh, the write-up down below should be thorough, so please read that too. Have a nice night.